Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, going comfortably numb and other strategies for dealing with portal season. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raider! Everything runs through Lubbock. Great to be with you on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to see you once again. And we are once again caught up in the whirlwind. We got a few different things to get into here today. We're going to have a football conversation to close it out. We'll hear from Red Raiders special teams and running backs coach Kenny Perry on double duty, at least intended for Dre McCray this season, one of Tech's most explosive players and one of the most explosive specialists in the nation a season ago. But we kick it off on a basketball front, and that's where the whirlwind is swirling. Happy portal season to all who celebrate or all who despise. Uh, whoever, you may be in either camp, depending on which player we're talking about. And today, Chris, I guess uh, we're discussing what, at least in my opinion, was unexpected. That is Devin Cambridge heading for the transfer portal. That's one guy that we've talked about on this show for a long time as anticipating to be back next season. Obviously, he's been on the shelf for a long time as his season was uh, set back by injury early on. We hadn't seen him in a month of Sundays, it feels like, and then some but didn't anticipate this news. Of course, when you get news like this, you never quite know what the finality of it exactly is. Could a guy return uh, from whence he came when he gets in the portal? Obviously, that's always an option. But uh, hitting me somewhat out of the blue, I'm wondering how it's catching you whenever uh, this news comes across. You feeling? Uh, you feeling vulnerable? So how you're feeling every day of my life has nothing to do with basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm comfortable being. Oh vulnerable. yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. I, I gather that's kind of how everybody is feeling, you know? Um, and uh, I, I get it. You can't tell fans how to feel um, if you want to be frustrated or angry or, Hey man, you know, wake me up when, when we get a full roster, let me know who's on the, <laughs> you know, th- th- there's all, all things in between, um, and, and I get it. I, that's the that's the beauty of the passion of uh, the, the Red Raider fan base, anyways, is that they feel some kind of way. You know, there, there's not just yeah. indifference. Um, and, and so I, I think that the 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 thing that's surprising about Devin potentially entering the portal, because um, I think that's just the way it was reported yesterday, is that he intends to. That's the yeah. there's all these layers to how how this stuff gets reported. Are you in it? Or are you intending to go in? And then we had people reporting last year, so and so intends to go in, and then he says, "Wait, no, I'm not." You know, like so. There's there's all kinds of, of, of things there, but usually where there's smoke, there's fire and all that stuff. And everybody ran with the the the, the national report last night on Devin, which I guess he, it was according to him. So, um, and then you had Demorion Williams too. The Cambridge one is interesting in so much as that if that is true and he does get it, in fact get into the portal, he had just said three or four days prior on his own social media you know not going anywhere can't wait to be back I don't remember exact phrasing and so you, you just don't know <clears throat> was this um, you, you know is this scheme or role related is this rehab related uh trying to come back from that injury is this an IL related is this just uh hey let me see what else is out there let's I mean I don't know you know, um, but uh, I, I don't I don't think that tech is necessarily surprised. Um, mm-hmm. I think Grant and his guys, um, I think Grant and his guys, you, you know, were. I'm trying to think of a way to, to, to phrase this like this was uh, this would be a, a player that I think I think Devin and Kerwin are kind of in that same boat in that. I, I think that there, there's some visions of we could see you back here, and I think that we'd maybe like it, but it has to be right. 
you know, w- whatever that is on both sides of it. And if it's not, hey, man, we, we good luck kind of deal. Um, I don't know if I phrased that correctly, but I think you maybe get what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, uh, y- you know, I, I think that there, there was some mutual interest there, but and I and I I'll say that about Devin. I still think there may be, you know, like, um, so we'll we'll just you know, but but I, I get I get the f- the fans are kind of winging out a little bit, and I I respect it, I understand it. Uh, but there's some panic. You feel vulnerable because you you like you had this full. Well, I say that you really never had a full roster. You you had you had a roster, uh, but yeah, you were missing <laughs> quite a few pieces and healthy pieces and all those things. But you, you just had this really good season, and now it's like, okay, what's left? What who's who do I root for now? And uh, I just I think you know Grant and those guys know what they're doing, um, and he's got a full staff around him that's uh, that is active. Um, I know there's a that you've got a visit in town. Uh, and that'll play out uh, as the week goes along, I'm sure. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, and, and is he a potential replacement for whom? I, I don't, you know, is he a starter? Is he a bench guy? Is he, a, I think people try to put these pieces real quickly in, 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 the, in a hole that may not really exist. And so you're just not real sure until you put the whole thing together. You don't really know. But um, so we'll just kind of. See, but yeah, the Cambridge thing was, you know, and, and again, part of it is because he had said, you know, um, and I like Devin, man. Devin's, he's got, he's got a good vibe to him. Uh, I think that he, he went out of his way to really, um, I, I think, uh, tell the folks, you, you know, I think that was some of his, in his social media. I, I really appreciate the folks at Texas Tech for taking care of me, you know, um, and like whether it was Mike Neal or what, you know, whatever, like the medical folks. Um, and, and I think he felt, but again, remember he came here with Warren, you know, and they were buddies. Warren's not going to be here anymore. So I don't, I don't know. We'll just kind of, but I'm just not ready to rule anything out there. Um, you know, he's not in the portal yet. Uh, it doesn't appear he intends to, according to his own word, he says he would be back. That's why the portal thing is kind of like, okay, you intend to go in, but you just said you'd be back. I'm, I'm confused. I don't know how to feel. I feel vulnerable. My pet's heads are falling off. What do, what do we do? You know, so, and here, here, here we sit. I kind of sit here as a fan thinking of uh, the meme with James Franco and a noose from the Ballad of Buster Scruggs saying first time, because this is like the repeat cycle, right? I guess we're going to be in almost every off season, maybe not to like some great extent you would hope like, you know, eight out of eight or whatever, but maybe sometimes three or four out of four. I don't know if you saw the chart that um, put up the final four team rosters and where they all began. I think Duke was the only one that had Duke origins across the board as far as the starting five was concerned. Uh, a little heavier there for like Purdue. And you look at some, I think NC State, I don't know if they had one uh, that began there. So it's just kind of interesting to see how this new era obviously unfolds and impacts fans from off season to off season. I got to, you know, speaking personally, I'm a little numb to it by now. And given where you were last year and the success you found while still putting together a roster the way you did, um, that I guess encourages me to be numb, at least for the time being. Cause I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Not sleep tonight because I'm freaking out over something that's number one out of my control, but number two, almost the norm, not just yeah. for Texas tech, but for so many others. And as far as the the social media post that you're making reference to, I think this was on uh, Instagram from Devin Cambridge, and it was a part of the Matador Club thank you posts, which I, may just kind of be throwaway posts as far as like real truth involved in them. Because I know everybody's like, hey, get out there and thank the Matador Club. So you see like all these roll out at the same time. And I don't know necessarily who's writing what, but they're a little bit different. Uh, in part, he's saying all of these things like, thank you to the fans. Thank you to the Matador club. My season was cut short, but it was definitely a year to remember. I'm forever grateful. Yada, yada, yada. He closes in all caps, mind you. So maybe it's the all caps that's throwing people off, but he closes the final sentence saying, but this is only the beginning because I will be back and I'm more hungry than ever. First, today's episode brought to you by Amazon's Fire TV, your destination for sports from live games to highlights and beyond. 
Fire TV offers incredible viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick, which you can just plug, boom, right into your existing television. And you got access to millions of movies and television episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the upcoming college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. And that's not all. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from all of your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV or Alexa devices. And if you haven't done it already, you don't know what you're missing. Trust me on that. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Because I will be back and I'm more hungry than ever. Um with an emoji that uh, indicates cursing over his mouth. So he's he very he, emphatic. But I, I will be back. It's just injury related. I didn't take that to mean Texas Tech. And, and, and you, you may be right. Yeah, that, that that's it. When, you, when you purse through it a little bit, you know, I will be back and healthy and, and all those things. And so, but I think other people took it because it's a Texas Tech related post. So yeah. you, 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 you're you absolutely right. And, and these kids... You know, play, I say kids. These these men. You know, I mean that, that's what most of them are are, are young men. Um, you know, I, I remember you know when you play high school basketball. Uh, when my when I got to college and my college coach was like, uh, you know, because in high school it's like, hey, you play boys basketball or girls basketball, right? Uh, but if you if you look on any college roster, junior college, D two, Division one, or whatever. It's like when do the men play versus the women? So it's like right. I guess as soon as you step foot in a in a college basketball program, you become a man, you know. Um, well, and if we're sympathetic to them as a fan, if <laughs> yeah. you're sympathetic, then you're just a kid. If we're mad at you, I mean, you're an adult for crying out loud. Grow up, you know that kind of thing. I yeah, think. that's that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, and, and so, yeah, so you could be you you could be a, a thousand percent right. It, it may have had nothing to do with. You know, being back here, uh, whatever. But I, I think some took it that way. I guess is what I'm, I'm empathizing sure. with yeah. with some of the reaction. Um, but again, you know, see, Devin is a. I'm going to guess he's probably got. He's not only a graduate; he's probably got a couple of different degrees. Could be working on a master's. You know, you know, for for all I know, depending on how he's you know maneuvered his way through his academic career. But he'd be allowed to go wherever he wanted to. There's no. You, you know, or anything like that. I, I think the one interesting thing about Devin, though, is that he's not, you know, he's not, I mean, at least last we saw him, he's not healthy. And I don't know how many months away that is, but I, I think that's probably several months away. And I would guess that if he were to actually leave here, it'll be with like rehab or the medical aspect would, would have, you know, play in heavily. Like, yeah. you know, because if you, if you get him, you're, you know, are you sure? Are, are do you know for sure what you're getting? You know, um, oh. you, well, I mean, yeah, you're, you're not getting a, a guy that can practice and is healthy and all those things. So that part is is tricky too. Um, but uh, so that's just another layer to this stuff. But again, man, you know, that's the that's the thing. If he wants to see what is out there and what you know. Uh, you know, I'd rather live here or play for this coach or in this scheme or see what NIL deal I could get elsewhere. I mean, all, all of that's on the table and you're, you're free, but it doesn't mean that you can't, um, you can't hook back up, you know, yeah. sure. <laughs> you know, I, I, I refuse to, in this particular case, I refuse to rule that out. Uh, doesn't mean I mean he could commit somewhere tomorrow and be like, well, I guess yeah, no, no rehooking up, but uh, you know, so that, that's but but you know that's the thing, man. It's like, isn't it wild? This whole the the movement, and you're right, you 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 probably are becoming a bit numb to it. But I'll say this, and we probably should talk about some of these same conversations were taking place last year. What did people say about like a guy like Darion Williams? Like, who's this guy? You know, like what well, this so this is this guy that's gonna save us, you know. I mean, like or or whatever. And and they, you know, they they knew what they were doing. And I think that they squeezed a lot out of not as much as you would prefer, and it worked. And so I'm kind of in some ways excited to see what all they put together here. Oh, for sure. And that's part of what is a double-sided coin or a double-edged sword or any other cliche you want to throw. This is it. 
part of these decisions are made by the program. Some of these guys are getting fired, and I'm not talking necessarily tech specifically, but across the nation, some of these dudes are being axed. Some of these guys are getting out there to see what they can find from an yep. NIL standpoint. And then you alluded to so many of the other reasons that it could possibly be, you know, academic interest, those that came to play school, um, those who want to live in certain Shut places up, Cardale Jones. Yes. <laughs> or don't want to live in certain places. And I'm here for all of it. I'm fine with, with all of it. I don't think there's any reason for any kid gloves to be involved necessarily with any of this stuff. Um, I'm sure as fans, we'd all love a little more transparency in that we want to know like, okay, who is the program saying sayonara to like you're out of here and which ones are based in the player's decision to say, I want to go see what I can get here elsewhere. And I just, I've got very little to no time or patience for the thought of criticisms leveled against anybody for quote unquote, chasing the bag, boy, there's no loyalty anymore. He's just chasing the bag. Well, what are you doing when you get out of bed? Is the bag chasing you? I mean, unless that's happening, then we're all chasing the bag. And I don't get why there's some like extreme separation for like an 18 to 22 year old where it's like, you should not be interested in cash. Like cash considerations. What are you, an animal? I mean, I don't get that at all. A lot of these guys, most of these guys, I mean, what's the old commercial like? 95% of NCAA athletes will go on to do something besides play sports or whatever yeah. the hell it used to say. Duh. And when we're talking about these dudes, I mean, there are great professional opportunities overseas and all kinds of spots outside of the NBA, but that's where most of them are headed if they're headed for more basketball at all. This may be one of their final opportunities to cash in. And some of these NIL agreements are insane when you're talking about $300,000, $500,000, $700,000 for a guy to play college basketball. I mean, I say it's insane, but the market dictates what the market dictates. Um, so I don't begrudge them at all. If somebody just came out and said, hey, I'm hitting the portal and it's because I'm looking for more money. Like it may be less palatable, I guess, to some out there, but I'm not begrudging anybody for that. If this is your time to strike while the iron is hot, I understand you're doing it. This is not a Cambridge part of the conversation, but I'm saying in general, Chris, I, I get a little bit tired of for some reason us putting these guys in different boxes where like they're not allowed to be interested in compensation. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and I think, uh, I, cause I think some people have painted it with a broad brush and said that everybody that gets in the portal, that this is they're, they're worried yes. about like the NIL aspect and like they're going, you know, and I, I can just tell you from a Texas tech standpoint, that some of the players that have left here, that, that couldn't be further from the truth. It, it's just, it's more playing time or it's different role or, you, you know, um, w w whatever it may have been, but it wasn't because of that. Maybe a factor, you know, and so, um, I, but I, I, I certainly, I, I don't know if we all agree on the system in place, like as it being perfect, but it, it is the system and, it, and it's basically, it's kind of how the rest of the world works. And what's interesting is these kids, they get to tell their own story in many ways. Okay. They're, they're in charge, you know, that they, they are in charge of what is said about them. Uh, what, what I'm going to do, where I'm not going, where I am going, uh, what, what, whatever. And then you, you know, um, I, I, th I think that's different before when nobody was like, what's so-and-so thinking? Well, now you just get on one of the various social media platforms and you find out what they're, what they're thinking, what they're saying. Uh, what, what they want you to see or hear, whatever it may be. So uh, it, it's just it's just so different. And I, I think um, I, I just don't envision a time where everybody, you know, turns the water off and says, OK, NIL, you, you're gone. Transfer portal or, or free to move about the cabin. You're gone. And we're going to I mean, and coaches and I think schools would love some guardrails here. And I just don't, I, I think, you know, hey, hey, Congress, can you just help, please? Can you just like make some legislation or pass some that, that really, you know, makes 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 everything transparent so we know who's getting what. You have to disclose it, uh, that you can't just transfer after every year, that you can only play, 
you know, five years with one red shirt year. Cause now it's like, okay, seven years. Well, yeah, there was some stuff that happened a couple years ago. You know what? Just, just keep going. It's fine. You want to keep <laughs> earning money. We don't want to tell you, you, you can't. Cause if you think about it, what you just said, some of these extra years of eligibility, what's that worth to a player? A hell in, of a lot <laughs> in life. That's what I'm saying. You know, and, and what's interesting about Devin's situation is this, this year we're talking about, it wasn't supposed to exist. Like he he was in his last year last year, you know, um, but because he only played so many games, he triggers what is is known as a medical red shirt, and so he gets that year of eligibility back. So I mean, here, here's a question to ask: What in a, nil money uh, or or any kind of monies did he you know acquire off of last year? Yeah, and does he still get all those? And you know, and so. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine, but it, it it makes you it makes you wonder, right? Oh, for sure. And yeah. again, I don't I don't blame them for taking advantage of whatever there is out there to be taken advantage of. And that sounds like derogatory, you know, taking advantage of it. I just mean it literally, like get your paper, boo boo, to use an industry term. Uh, <laughs> strike while the iron is hot. But I I, uh, I like the player thing. when healthy. I liked the. Well, player. that's the other thing from a basketball perspective, yeah. Chris. I don't even know what we're missing. I mean, we got a glimpse of what looks like a high flying, explosive dude, and then a guy that was in you know sweatpants the rest of the year. I, if he's gone, it's kind of hard for me to miss what we never sort of fair. had. But yeah, at the same fair. time, I I wouldn't mind having him back in the mix. Obviously, yeah. He he he, he was somebody that I think when healthy, we had seen enough. Good defender, really good in transition. Not a great shooter. Again, small body of work. Okay, so this yeah. is what we had to go off of. Not a great shooter. Um, but y- you know, kind of a slasher, somebody that gets up and down the floor, somebody that can be like a one man fast break, uh, a plus on the rebounding side, plus on the defensive side. Um, probably not as good when the game slows down in a half court offensive scenario. That's maybe where he would, uh, struggle a bit, maybe be relegated to like crashing the glass on the offensive boards and things like that. So that that's what you, you kind of saw as a player, but, um, and, and it's funny too because I had I've had uh, some few people reach out to me and be like, you, you know, um, like almost asking the question aloud, based on what you were saying a while ago, is like you know most of these players, especially big time college uh, football and basketball and stuff, they're all paid, right? They're they're professional in that sense that you're paid to do a service and, and a task. Do you do you talk about them the same as you would have if when they weren't being paid? You know, like are mm-hmm. you as critical? You know, like we would do like uh, Luka Doncic when he just like sucks yeah. one night. You know, do, do we, uh, dude? I mean, that's a waste. Of, you know, um, I, I I don't know. I don't know if I have the answer to that question. I I, I haven't really changed in any way how I would talk about this stuff. But it, it's like funny how just things that the dynamic has changed in many ways about how how this space, you know, people operate in this space. We're just talking about the sport or all the things that coaches are dealing with these days. I mean, it's just different perspectives out there because it's just changed so much in the last three to four years. And we'd love to hear perspectives from you out there in the YouTube (laughs) comments. So go ahead and uh, file or lodge your complaint or consideration or accusation, whatever you got. Uh, keep them coming there in the YouTube comments. Oh, and I get, yeah, I get plenty of complaints. I can tell you that. (laughs) We're going to switch gears to wrap up our conversation and end uh, on a football front as we want to revisit Joey McGuire and the Red Raider football spring camp that is progressing as we speak. And looking back to last season and trying to extrapolate into what is upcoming this season, one of the guys I'm most anticipating seeing on the field is First, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel and say adios to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset, a one seed, or anything in between, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, overs, unders. You can even pick who's going to win it. All. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets with FanDuel. 
one of the guys I'm most anticipating seeing on the field is Dre McCray, who became really in a different way than I anticipated, Chris. I don't know that he became such an explosive uh, pass catcher for you as you may have anticipated, but really sort of revamped or revolutionized. I don't know, that may be a little extreme to call it that, but uh, your return game, he became a really explosive dude as far as uh, the kicking game was concerned. We're going to see him back in that spot again, but apparently could be pulling double duty as a return man. I'll let uh, Red Raider running backs and special teams coach Kenny Perry describe it a little further. Here is Coach Perry on Dre McCray. The offseason, he's been working great. You know, he's been really, uh, he's done a lot of stuff. You know, uh, Jordan Brown, you know, we had already, he was already here. And then, um, you know, adding some of those, you know, TJ West is, you know, he's gotten some. Coy can do it, you know, but yeah, we want, we want to put Dre in that um, situation that now he can be a true dual threat, kick returner, punt returner as well. Uh, punt returners, you guys know, is a little harder, a little more difficult. Just because you, if you've never done it, judging a ball in college is a lot different than high school where half the balls hit the ground 20 yards ahead of you and you pick up a hot roll and you go fake one guy out and you score. It's not the same in college. You know, they're going to punt away from you. And he's been working. He's worked all offseason. Coach Johnson's done a great job with him. Um, Juice, in case you guys don't know, but Juice has done a good job of training him up to, to get him more to that stage. And, you know, we're going to keep – we're going to get him a chance to get out there. For the record, playground – High school, junior high, college, NFL, punt returning never looked easy to me, Coach. Uh, not something I was ever going to sign up for, but uh, this is pretty interesting. I didn't anticipate this coming around. I, I think hitting a baseball is the one of the hardest skills in sports, hitting it well, okay? Like it's one of the hardest may, – may, maybe a, a golf ball, like hitting it where you want to go is maybe right there in the same – vicinity I, I would say though that punt returner ranks up there in the top five as far as sports skills or tasks <laughs> because there's nothing there's no equivalent to your chin uh, up in the air and you are <laughs> blind and you're asked to catch this wobbly sphere coming hurling at you and meanwhile there's a lot of noise a lot of pomp and circumstance around you and if you even if you do catch it you look down you could be destroyed. Like, I mean, you know, <laughs> boom. And and also, it's like they, they ask you at, at times, hey, you know what? Wave and tell everybody a hello and then try to catch it, you know, to protect yourself. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean. Like a circus act. It, or it, it, it is not for everybody. And, and those, you know, look, I, I don't think Texas Tech has been – where they ultimately have wanted to be as a punt return group uh, in several years. I think there were, there were several times in, in years where, you know, I think Adrian Fry was criticized about this. I think um, I'm trying to remember some of the other guys you've had guys back there that you felt were sure handed. You weren't trying to basically net a return as much as you were like, let's, let's get the yards that, we know we can get. Let's put the guy back there that's sure-handed, that's going to catch it, that's not going to let it bounce and then roll and cost us some yards. Yeah. And they can maybe get five to seven, ten yards on occasion and, you know, a, a fairly conservative type type player back there, okay? I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, because we'd all you'd all love the Wes Welker, the, the guy that is, is one of the best that uh, college football has ever seen. And, uh, and and I'm, I'm fascinated by the Dre McCray possibility because I think that you nailed it. Dre didn't show up here and just light it on fire from a receiver standpoint. Now, some of that is that quarterback issues and health issues and and just, you know, the totality of it. And he just kind of, you know, but he exceeded any expectation that anybody would have had as a kick returner. He was one of the best in the Big 12 Conference. Um, you know, ha popped off a, a hundred yard return. I think he was averaging like 30 yards of return. Okay. And so I, I'm fascinated by his uh, possibility as a, as a punt returner. Once upon a time, uh, home to the goat, as far as that is concerned. And I think it's been since Wes Welker. I, I don't remember another that has been anywhere near as impactful. And again, when you're setting an NCAA punt return touchdown record, it's hard to say, like, okay, well, next man up. You want to go ahead and go for 10? I think uh, – Well, he had eight or nine? He had what, what? eight at that time. That's tied for second still on the all-time list. Dante Pettis of Washington okay. uh, is at the top with nine. Never heard of him. Antonio Perkins of Oklahoma 
is tied with West with eight. Never heard of him either, but uh, nonetheless, it's been since then. I mean, that that's early 2000s uh, that we're talking about since you've really been impactful. And yeah, there's a lot of those years where we're like, all right, um, it's like almost considered a touchdown if we just don't screw this up, if we just don't biff this, you know, much less just securing the possession. But you're talking about letting the ball bounce and all those things. So looking forward to maybe a little more explosiveness uh, there from Dre McCray. And maybe you'll have a chance uh, as a pass catcher as well to make a little bit more consistent impact. Well, just think about just think about what a net negative it is when you muff <clears throat> when you muff a punt. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, th- there's just so many factors there. It, it's uh, it's fascinating, but uh, I, I I love the player here. He is quality human and and like he cares, and I do think he's going to factor in a lot more at receiver than people realize because guys like Micah Hudson, Caleb Douglas, Josh Kelly, Koy Aiken. Uh, Boyd, I mean, all, all those guys, they're, they're going to help uh, Dre all help each other just because I think they'll be that much more explosive, including those tight ends too. So anyway, it's fun yeah. talking football, man. Yeah, looking forward to seeing how that will uh, turn out a little ways down the road and uh, looking forward to seeing how, like sands through the hourglass, <laughs> the next day of our portal lives uh, will turn out. So make sure that you're here on the other side so you don't miss a thing. Keep hope alive. <laughs> I mean, yeah, listen to that. Keep it alive. Uh, and I know some will say, eh, Chris, hope is not a strategy. Well, uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, just keep it alive, man. I, I, I'm telling you, I think uh, I think Grant and his guys will, will put something together that people will really like. So. Uh, either way, we're going to be here for it. So make sure that you are subscribe on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. So you never miss an episode. Appreciate the time. Uh, as always, Chris, I'm keeping my hope alive and hope everyone out there will do the same. And we hope to see you back for the next round on locked on Texas tech.